Good morning. Brothers and sisters, please stand as we begin our Eucharistic celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, Jesus is inviting all of us to open our hearts so that we can also welcome His graces, His presence, and His blessings. Let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to, to Almighty God, God and, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that, that I have greatly sinned. sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in, and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all of the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us 
forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Gloria in excelsis Deo.
through the grace of adoption, chose us to be children of light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God of forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the second book of Kings. One day, Elisha came to Shonim, where there was a woman of influence who urged him to dine with her. Afterward, whenever he passed by, he used to stop there to dine. So she said to her husband, I know that Elisha is a holy man of God. Since he visits us often, let us arrange a little room on the roof and furnish it for him with a bed, table, chair, and lamp so that when he comes to us, he can stay there. Sometime later, Elisha arrived and stayed in the room overnight. Later, Elisha asked, Can something be done for her? His servant, Jehaza, answered, Yes, she has no son, and her husband is getting on in years. Elisha said, Call her. When the woman had been called and stood at the door, Elisha promised, This time next year, you will be fondling a baby son. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. promises of the Lord I will sing forever. Through all generations, my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said, my kindness is established forever. In heaven, you have confirmed your faithfulness. Blessed the people who know the joyful shout. In the light of your countenance, O Lord, they walk. At your name, they rejoice all the day. And through your justice, they are exalted. You are the splendor of their strength, and by your favor, our horn is exalted. For the Lord belongs our shield, and to the Holy One of Israel, our King. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with Him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his apostles, Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up his cross and follow, me, and follow after me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you, receives me. And whoever receives me, receives the one who sent me. Whoever receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever receives a righteous man because he is a righteous man will receive a, right, a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives only a cup of cold water to one of these little ones to drink, because 
the little one is a disciple, Amen, I say to you, he will surely not lose his reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. On behalf of our Cathedral Rector, Monsignor Roli de la Cruz, we warmly welcome you this Sunday, the 13th Sunday in Ordinary Time, to our Mother Church. Maligayang pagdating po sa inyong lahat. And we are blessed that you are here with us again to thank God for a past week and to pray and ask for God's guidance for another week coming ahead for all of us. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, before becoming the vice rector of our cathedral, I was a seminary formator to minor seminarians of Our Lady of Guadalupe Minor Seminary. We pastor to seminarians from grades 7 until grade 12, junior high and senior high seminarians. And just try to imagine kung gaano pong kakukulit ang mga batang ito. Try to imagine, at least during my time, almost 80 young men together in one shelter, day in and day out. Baka po isa pa lang sumusuko na yung iba. Kami po, ochentang bata. I don't really know if my seminarians got my signal right that if they wish to seek my presence, if they wish to know if I'm there inside the seminary, if they wish to talk to me, they have to check if my door is quite open. Iniiwan ko po kasing bukas yung pintuan ko kapag naroroon ako sa loob. And for me, that habit of mine of opening my door is a signal of availability. Opening my door would mean I am here. Opening my door would mean to accept capacity all forms of expressions and experiences, be it their human need, a shoulder to cry on, mga bata, eh, madalas gustong umiyak, namimiss si mami at si daddy, at least to answer their questions. Father, pwede po ba akong makauwi? Father, pwede po bang gumamit ng ganto, ng ganyan? Even the simplest and fun, fanciest reason of, Father, gutom po ako. Kulang po yung kinain po namin. Gusto lang nilang manggulo sa akin after their classes. Gusto lang nilang makakita ng makakausap. And this won't only vary or won't only happen for seminarians, but even to seminary formators na nakasama ko sa aking seminary ministry. Open doors signify welcome, warmth, avail availability, and embrace. If there's one thing that I really love about the Manila, Manila Cathedral, our big doors are always open for pilgrims, for tourists, and for all of us faithful every day. I don't know if I share the same, same sentiments with all of you. At least to see these doors open is consolation itself for me. The church is available. This church is ready to welcome me. I can rest and pray inside that God is ready to welcome me and that God is ready to listen to me. Jesus has enumerated ways on how an apostle or a follower of him can truly be. 
But ultimately, after all the forms of letting go, before anything else, an apostle needs to live a heart that have doors opened. Or shall we say, an open door spirituality. Elisha was received by this woman. He experienced hospitality at its finest because God has showed, this woman has showed what an open heart is really about. The readiness to accept someone as well the readiness to embrace through that person the presence and the graces of God. Similarly, if a disciple of Christ would live and leave ang mabuhay at mag-iwan ng isang bukas na puso, an open heart to everyone and to even to God Himself, we are assured how consolations, shared stories, life realizations, and even heartwarming conversations could lead to deeper experiences of God and of one another. We know very well, my dear friends, how COVID-19 closed our doors and our daily normal life, transactions, and relations. We have seen for ourselves how a usual afternoon coffee with friends, with fellow senior citizens, inside or in front of a house or inside a bahay kubo was for a time prohibited. We saw how houses or families protected themselves by prohibiting long visits or even non-essential business with them. We saw how usual social gatherings or places were closed because of safety. We saw how even churches were closed as well. And we know very well that as the situation gets a little better than before, restrictions are in a way loose. We are happy to see doors and families wide open to welcome family, friends, and dear ones. But we are also sad to see and experience families communities, and even close friends, individuals who made lockdown a lifestyle until now. Ayaw nang buksan muli ang puso at ang bahay. Kandado na nga ang bahay, kinandado pati ang puso hanggang ngayon. The lockdown made them feel the peace of having no one to welcome. But then, as time goes by, ayaw nang tumanggap ng tao. We might even heard of people not welcoming guests anymore. Ayaw namin sa mga outsiders. You're filthy enough to enter our home. Baka naranasan na din natin na parang hindi na tayo tanggap o welcome sa mga bahay o mismo sa buhay ng mga taong nakapaligid sa atin. St. John Paul II, during the inauguration of his pontificate, said the simple and yet powerful words, Aprite le porte a Cristo. Open wide the doors to Christ. Like this woman in our first reading, like the invitation of Jesus to all of us today, may our availability bless us with God's bounty and with God's plenty. 
maybe we can also ask ourselves, what are the things that kept us from welcoming and opening our doors to be available again for my friends, for my family, for my parents, and even for myself so that I can welcome Christ through them. Or we can also even ask ourselves, what are the things that made me unavailable for others and even for God? Have I taken seriously the lockdown that even my heart now is locked up and cannot be opened again? With Jesus, through the woman, and St. John Paul II, may all of us ask Jesus to open wide our doors for Him. He is one with those who are waiting outside our hearts. He is with those waiting for our presence. He is with those wanting our ears. He is with those wanting our warm embrace. He is with those wanting the quench and answer to their thirst. He is with those wanting consolation as they face their doubts, their anxiety, and even their fears. He is one with those thirsting for directions and, and certainties. He is one with those asking companionship in times of loneliness and fears. He is with those wanting our assurance as they face everyday struggle. He is one with those wanting God through our simple ways and means. My dear brothers and sisters, let us open wide the doors for Christ so that we can also open wide the doors for one another. We will not only welcome a friend, we will not only welcome a new person in our lives, a distant or long-time friend, but through them, through these people whom we will all welcome almost every day in our lives, we will welcome and experience God through them. Who would know, my dear friends, after opening wide the doors for Christ and for one another, they also, God also, would open wide the doors of His graces to all of us. They carry with them God's messages of healing, God's favors and abundance, God's blessings He wishes you and me to receive with arms and the doors of our heart wide open. Please stand. Let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven, heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third the day, third day he, rose he rose again from, from the dead. dead. He, he ascended, ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen.
the words of Christ may seem harsh and difficult in today's gospel. Without grace, we could not take up the cross and follow Him. But we are baptized, sharers in divine life. We can pray with confident faith in the God who loves us. And for every prayer, we shall always say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For all people who have been baptized into the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For leaders of nation who seek truth, justice, and reverence for human life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those Christians who have given up everything in following the call of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. For the spirit of welcome, encouragement, and support for our pastors, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. For the eternal glory of those who have died, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, Lord, hear our, our prayer. prayer. In silence, we lift up to the Lord all of the prayers offered in this Mass, the prayers of our dear brothers and sisters joining us via online streaming, our prayers for one another, and our own intentions. For all of these, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, through the new life of baptism, we are your sons and daughters. Hear the prayers of your adopted children and give us the grace to follow your Son who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated.
please stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy Church. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, He humbled Himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, He freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, He gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, 
he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, Almighty Father, Give us life through your Spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son and confirm us in the bond of communion together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, with all other bishops, with priests and deacons, and with your entire people. Grant that all the faithful of the Church looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, that, sharing their grief and pain, their joy and hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is Yours forever and ever.
At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all the distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I live you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Please stand. Let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that, bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. Once again, my dear friends, we wish to thank you for joining us in this Sunday's Eucharist. We thank you as well for your participation and for your support for all our cathedral events, most especially the past cathedral and archdiocesan events that we have had here. The Memorial and the Feast Day Mass of St. Jose Maria Escriva and the, our Pope's Day celebration. You might as well want to still visit and uh, reminisce your papal visit experiences as you also pass and uh, enter through the papal visit memorabilia exhibit just uh, inside of our Blessed Souls Chapel. You can also see close at hand and uh, as the nearest as you wish, the, the, the Pope Mobile used by Pope Francis during his apostolic visit here in the Philippines last 2015. It was, borrowed to, it was lent to us and uh, we, we borrowed this from the Je Isuzu Gen Cars Incorporated Philippines. We thank this uh, gracious people for lending us this papal visit memorabilia for us to reminisce and remember the goodness of these hopes who once stepped in our land and once shared our experiences and memory as a Filipino nation. Sana po ay magkaroon tayo ng oras to see and uh, again encounter and remember our memories with our Holy Father. Later at 10 a.m. this morning, we will be celebrating a send of Mass for our dear Father Kali Yamado and for Father Bong Bayaras. We will be sending them off with our prayers and support as they face this, this mission of studying further for a beautiful and a meaningful ministry ahead of them. Again, we, we hopefully see each other here at the cathedral. Welcome po sa inyong lahat and may God bless you this week and forever. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you forever and ever. Amen. May His face shine upon you and be gracious to you forever and ever. Amen. May He look upon you with favor and grant you His peace forever and ever. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass has been offered. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Amen.